Hey YouTube, how you guys doing this morning? Just wanted to do a video. I wanted to. I did the video about the Black Lives Matter the other day, and I, there's like several. There's actually a bunch of scriptures that I wanted to share, but of course I forgot and left out some of them. But just trying to help everybody understand, you know, the world stage with prophecy and what's going on with Israel. I know I talked about the uh, the Jews that are set up in Israel are Gentiles because, like the Bible says in Genesis uh, chapter 10, verse 5, it says the Ashkenaz are of the Isle of the Gentiles. But uh, what I wanted to go, I'm going to skip around just a little bit, but uh, let me find this. This is a good one that I missed. Uh in Psalms chapter 83, verse 3, it says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden hidden ones. You know, they took, uh, Mary and Joseph took Jesus and they hid in Egypt. And the Egyptians are the descendants of Ham. They were real dark. And, you know, the only way they were able to hide was because Joseph, Mary, and Jesus were real dark. I mean, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? But anyway, verse 4, it says, They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more in remembrance. So what you got to do is you got to think, kind of think about how the enemy would think. You know what I mean? If If the Jews were God's chosen ones, which the Bible clearly says that right here, says, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in all these shall all families of the earth be blessed. So obviously, Jesus loves the Jews. But because of disobedience, and they were very stiff-necked people, they started serving other gods, and they rejected the Messiah. You know, they rejected Jesus as being the Messiah. They even said, let his blood be among us and among our children. But I had a couple comments. Let me jump there real quick. Of uh, this guy, Lucky Ben Hebrew. I've known him for a long time, but he clearly rejects the gospel. And he rejects the, the New Testament. And like it says in Romans, it says the Jews, for the gospel's sake, will be the enemies. But uh, he says, if Jesus really died for us, why would God put us in slavery worldwide for many years? If Jesus' blood took away sins, why is God hunting us down like dogs? I mean, those are those are good questions, but the whole reason why you guys, uh, the, the Jews, are slaves is is because they had the Lord crucified and said his blood be on our children and then God turned to the Gentiles. Let's see. Paul is not God and we only live by every word that come out of the most high Yah's mouth to hell with Paul. See, they, they hate Paul. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. But here, look at this this one right here. He said, Chuck, the creator of heaven and earth came in the flesh. That's a joke. They conspired to paint the image of God in man's likeness. Does that sound familiar to you? I know it does, but you're arrogant. You won't let Jesus go. I mean, come on. I already said that the the image of Jesus that they give us, the white, you know, that Caesar Borg or Bogus or whatever his name is. You know, like I said a minute ago, if you're the enemy What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to want to cut off God's chosen people from being a nation. And I just read that. It said that in Psalms. Right here it says, They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So they cut they cut the Jews off from being a nation. They got to have a certain people in there to fool everybody with the lie. So there's where you get the fake Jews, the synagogue of Satan. They're over there now. And also, if you were uh, if you were the enemy and the devil, you would want to take away 
their original language. I mean, this modern Hebrew is not the Jews' original language. You know, the only thing that we know for sure is that the Bible tells us right here. Let's see. In Psalms, it says, They have delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. And in Galatians, it says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go into the heathen and they into the circumcision. So God turned to the heathen. I mean, we know that he turned to the Gentiles. So the Gentiles, God had to preserve his word in English. You know, think about it. If you're the devil, you're going to want to get rid of the people. You're going to want to make it where Israel is a nation, not a nation anymore. And you're, you're going to put the white image and you're going to whitewash. They whitewashed all the history. You know, Satan always turns everything upside down. But we see in uh, prophecy where it talks about in the latter times, the Jews will start to know who they are. Right here, uh, Baruch 2.30, it says, For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captives they shall remember themselves. They're starting to remember themselves. Uh, where do I want to go next? Uh, Let's see. But here's just more proof that when God turned from the Jews, I mean, this is in Deuteronomy, this is in the Torah. I mean, he turns from them and he hardens their hearts. He puts them in a deep slumber. But right here it says, And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Talking about the end. For they are very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with these which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Okay, what do you think the foolish nation? I mean, they're going to provoke them with a foolish nation. You know, that's us. That's the Gentile nations. Even in Romans, Paul said the same thing. He said, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come into the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So they're definitely being provoked to jealousy. I mean, you can see that. I can see that all in the comment section. Okay, I had a couple other good ones I wanted to find. Let me see. But yeah, they don't believe that Jesus was God. I mean, it says right here in John 1, 14, and the word... You know, Jesus is three. It's the Godhead. You have the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, right? The three. The three make one. And it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and was beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's from John, one of the, you know, when the, probably the apostle that Jesus loved the most. Check this out. This was even in Psalms. If you go back to the Old Testament, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? So what happened is the creator that created this flat earth that we live on, he came down and visited us. It says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. He had to become lower than the angels. I'm talking about God Almighty, so he could be crucified, because there's no sacrifice that would be sufficient 
other than God himself. No bulls or goats or sheep or lambs would be a sufficient sacrifice. You know, God himself had to make himself a little lower than the angels. But it says, and has cast him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Here it is again in Hebrews. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Here we go again in Hebrews 2, chapter 9. But we see Jesus. Jesus. In English, Jesus, Jesus, that is God, that is his name in English. It says, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Jesus died for every man. He died for all flesh. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men where, whereby we must be saved. So these Jews and the Hebrews that are out there in the streets chanting F your Jesus, F your Jesus, they are in big, big trouble. <laughs> because God must have hardened their heart. Because the, the Bible says there's no other name for, for whereby we must be saved. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. God, there's only one God. There's not two gods. I hear a lot of channels. You know, Jesus was glorified and he's at the right hand with the Father. He was made lower than the angels to suffer death, but now he is at the right hand of the Father. There is one God in heaven, and there's one mediator between God and men, and that's Jesus. A lot of people seem to say they're going to pray to the Father, and they're going to pray to Yahushua, or Yahusha, I think that's the word they use, but there is one God. There is only one God. There's not two gods or three gods. There's only one creator. But as far as the church goes, the body of Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You know, I have uh, white brothers and sisters. I have black brothers and sisters. Where There's neither you know, black or white. When you get saved, there's neither Jew nor Greek. You're one in Christ when you get born again and you accept Jesus. Also, people, the Jews, says, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. But for the gospel, they are the enemies. So I've got a couple other things I want to share. Let's see. Here's a good one. Let's see if I can remember this. Let's pull this up. I didn't have this one pulled up. Sorry about this, but I'll get it here. It's Nehemiah. Let me see if I can find this. Here it is. I think it's 27, 27 or 28. Okay. Talking about the Jews, uh they they followed God and but you know the laws and the uh the ordinances were always established to point towards the cross and to point towards Jesus Christ, but here, this, this shows them them uh, willingly entering into that curse of the law right here. 
says uh, Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 28. And the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Neathims, and all they that separated themselves from the people of the land into the law of God, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. See, they all had knowledge. They all understood this. Says they clave to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse. Now, why would why would God call it a curse? You know, the law is good if used right. The law is righteous, but there's no man. Only Jesus was able to fulfill the law perfectly. But here it says, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord, our Lord, and his judgments and his statutes. Just remember when you're, you know, when people, when you want to get back to the Torah and you want to go back under the law, it says in Nehemiah ten twenty nine that it's a curse when you enter into that oath. But it also says right here, uh, let me find this one. I don't think I have this one wrote down, but it says if you uh, try to keep the whole of the law and if you offend in just one part of the law, you're guilty of the whole law. Let's see if I have this one. Here, I didn't read this one earlier. I was going to read this one. But uh, this is what's going on with the Jews. It was in Isaiah 29.10. It says, For the Lord hath poured out upon your spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers and seers hath covered. He covered. And the vision of all is becoming to you as words of a book that is sealed which man delivered to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. See, the Jews are blind. They don't. Most of them don't know who they are. And that's what Jacob's trouble. God is going to go back to Israel. He's going to go back to his chosen people, and he's going to save a remnant of them. But right now, they are in a deep sleep and a slumber. But... Like I said, the 400-year curse, I believe that's over, and that's where a lot of them are starting to wake up, like it says in Baruch. But you still, your heart has to be circumcised. Right here, this is, this is the most important, is your heart. you got to have a good and honest heart. Like, you remember the parables of the ground you had the the thorns and the thistles, you had the wayside. You know, God talks about the seed that fell on the wayside was the devil came right away and just took it away as soon as they heard it. And then the stones and the thorns and thistles are, you know, the cares of this world that choke the word out. But then you have the good ground. And that's a good and honest heart. And those are the only people that are saved. But anyway, G, uh, says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, those two hang all the law and the prophets. You fulfill the law by loving God and loving your neighbor. You fulfill the whole law. You're not going to be coveting your neighbor's stuff. You're not going to be murdering your neighbor. You're not going to be fornicating your neighbor. You're going to be fulfilling the law completely. I've already read these, haven't I? Yep. But I got one more verse, and then I, I want to show you guys part of a video that's pretty interesting. But let me find this one real quick. Let 
And I gotta go to the New Testament. Here it is. Just remember this. Uh, a lot of these uh, Jews and Hebrews, they need to go to the New Testament. They need to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. But it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. It says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and I have not charity, I am nothing. So if we don't have love in our hearts for our neighbors, we don't have anything. You can have a YouTube channel and you can be, uh, you know, bringing all this crucial end times knowledge and have all this understanding. But if you don't have love for your neighbor, then it's all for naught. You know what I mean? There's, it's no benefit. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. How many people out there that do you know get puffed up in their own self? You know, pride, that is the spirit of this world. You know, I see so many people that get puffed up and proud. But it says in Proverbs 16, 4, that a proud heart is an abomination. You know, this world, what's this world always telling you to do? To have pride in everything you do? And you have the uh, pride, gay pride, and all that nonsense. But it says, Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. You know, are we easily provoked? I know I am sometimes, but I, I pray that I have more patience. It says, Thinketh no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. You guys can read this. I won't go through all this, but uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is pretty awesome. Here's here's I'll read this last one right here, but it says, For we see through a glass darkly. See, right now we are seeing through a glass darkly, but once we get changed and, you know, once we get redeemed, it says, But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. It says, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest is charity. But yeah, we see in that glass darkly until we get made like him and we are redeemed, you know, into the day of redemption. But anyway, let's see if I can find this video real quick, guys. Great. Here it is right here. Uh, it was The Truth Will Set You Free. Actually, a friend Joshua Dansby, he's a good brother. I was talking to him. But just think about this for a little while and do your own research. 99% of the Christian truth or community is currently using one of these names. Look at the origin of these Yah names. Like I said, if you were the devil... And you wanted to deceive, especially God's chosen. The devil hates the Jews more than any other nation. He hates the Jews. If you were the devil, wouldn't you not want to take their language, their original Hebrew language? You would get rid of that a long time ago. I researched this about 10 or 11 years ago. Yeah, that's true. If everybody's using them, they must be right. I don't think there's any sound in this video. Yep, that's where I heard the ancient Hebrew went extinct in 550 BC. And we know if, if those fake Jews, those evil, let me pause this, if the evil Kabbalist you know, those Ashkenaz uh, Gentiles that are that stole God's land. That's the language they're speaking. 
why would you want to speak their language? I mean, they're into the Talmud, into all those satanic books of the dead, skull and bones. I would not want to have anything to do with that Hebrew that they're speaking. And that's what all the preachers nowadays, they, they, they learn that modern day Hebrew and they think they get so puffed up and they think they're so smart. Let me start this. Yeah, just pray to God and search all these things out. Don't believe anything anybody says. You know, don't believe anything I say. That's why I try to show you guys the scripture. Just read it for yourself. God is no respecter of persons, that's for sure. Eliezer ben Judah. Yeah, that sounds like a... Ugh. Here, guys, I will leave a link to this video. I'll put it in the description. But like I said, if you were the devil, it said right here. Let me read this one again. This one's really good. Uh, sorry about that. It says, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. The devil has wanted to get rid of the original Jews. They don't want the world to know who they are. And says, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. Well, the name of Israel, the devil went a step further. The name of Israel is still in remembrance, but it's the synagogue of Satan that's over there. I mean, look at this right here. Where it says, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. You got 99.99% of Christians and the churches blessing those evil, the synagogue of Satan. They're literally blessing the synagogue of Satan. So if I was the devil, I would be doing exactly what he is doing. I would have taken Israel and replaced them. I mean, it says that the Jews were put on ships and sent to the four corners of the world, you know, to be made slaves. And then the second thing I would do would be, this is the second thing I would do. I would make everybody think that this dude is your Messiah. I mean, come on. Really, all you got to do is, Anything that this world tells you, it's, it's probably going to be the opposite. The devil always turns everything upside down. Why do you think these people always point one hand up, you know, eyes above, so below? But anyway, that's it. I was just wanted to share. There was a few more scriptures that I forgot the other day. But I was just talking to you about how a lot of the Jews, they hate Jesus and they definitely hate the writings of Paul. But the Bible says that they're going to be put in a deep slumber. You know, and God's going to come back to the Jews. That's why it's called Jacob's Trouble. And he's going to save a remnant of them. But anyway, I love all you guys. Y'all take care. God bless.